ra 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 ah ah ma ra ma ma ga ga ooh la la let's start the show now ra ra ah 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 ra ma ra ma ma ga ga ooh la la let's start the show now I want your love and I want your revenge I want your love I don't wanna be friends you turn a more I je vous t'en revanche you turn a more I don't wanna be friends Love it has been good to me this time around Things were the love bound to change when it was found Sugar never tasted sweeter on my lips My heart is now intact and I can find Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Xandermonium, the talk show that gets you talking. I'm Xander Gibb and on today's show, Xander's Soapbox, London Calling with Jeff Christian, who talks to the fabulous Andrew Robley, musical theater performer and recording artist. Betty Chipmunk will be here with her usual brand of what's hot and what's not in Hollywood uh, in Watch This Space. More to come in a near moment. So you can interact with me via social media. You can tweet me. My Twitter handle is at Xander Gibb, X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B, -B, capital X, capital G. Make sure to follow and keep up to date with what's going on the show and what's going on with little old Zanny G. And now it's time for Xander's Soapbox. So as some of you may know, I recently wrote an article in response to the speech that uh, actor Jesse Williams gave at the BET Awards recently. And a lot of people were surprised that I was so irked by what he said. Um, but not only was I irked about what he said, I actually had to question his motivation. Now. The suggestion that all white people are racist and that all cops are racist and that all white people are bad is obviously nothing short of folly. And yes, there is a lot of racism in America and it needs to be stamped out. And it is imperative that we speak out about those things that we feel strongly about. But the thing that concerns me most is that in that commentary, what we should be doing is uniting and not dividing. You see, I don't feel like Jesse Williams' speech was uniting anyone but the black community. Now, the community is built up of all of us, of you, of me, um, black people, white people, gay people, straight people, a whole plethora of difference there. But don't you see, if we only unite our little section, of the community. We're not really uniting as a whole. What we're doing, in fact, is we're segregating yet again. Now, I made my opinions clear in my article and I actually said how I felt and some people chose to call me a racist, which really bothered me uh, from the perspective that I couldn't be any further from a racist. But what bothered me even more was this ongoing Thing that if we disagree with anybody, then we're somehow uh, a phobic or an ass. 
I mean, people, we are allowed to disagree without being a hater. Uh, I just personally, and a lot of people also too, took great uh, umbrage with the things that this actor was saying and continues to say. And it's in the same vein of Beyonce going out at the Super Bowl and having dancers dressed as Black Panthers. I'm sorry, we know that a lot of stuff has gone down and a lot of people have been treated really badly. But we can't change what's gone before, we can only change the future. And as I keep saying on this show, there is no us and them, there is just us. And if you choose to use the terminology us and them, I'm sorry, but I think you are part of the problem. That was Xander's Soapbox. If you'd like to get on your soapbox, you can do so by emailing me your MP3s, no longer than five minutes long, and no profanity, uh, via xandergib.com forward slash contact. That's xandergib.com forward slash contact. And now it's time for a London Calling. Summer days drifting away to uh, oh the summer nights. Willa, willa, willa. The elevated train by my window doesn't faze me anymore. The rattling screams don't disrupt my dreams. Climb every mountain. Ford every stream. I don't know how you really can ford every stream, but anyway, I was just singing a little bit of uh, musical theatre, something you didn't know about me. And the guest on uh, London Calling today is a musical theatre singer and recording artist, and his name is Andrew Robley. You can check him out now. See you later, Jeff. I'll buy you a beer in the bar. I don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. Yes, you've guessed it. It's time for this week's London Calling, where Jeff Christian speaks to the fabulous Andrew Robley, musical theatre performer and recording artist. Let's check it out. Hello America, London calling. Very, very lucky today to be here with the fantastic uh, musical theatre performer, Mr. Andrew Robley. Thank you Andrew, very much. Nice, uh, nice of you to come and join us. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Um, now, your career started really, really early, didn't it? It did, yes. I was a child star, so they say, um, at the age of seven. And you, you had a hit record at the age of eight, so it's about that. I like... did, yes. Um, I used to do what they called the God Slot on a Sunday evening. Um, on British television, they have um, either choral music or hymns and things like that. And um, they were looking for a blue eyed, blonde little choir boy to sing the signature tune, and they couldn't find anybody, so they asked me. So um, <laughs> I was really thrilled, and um, we did this particular song, which was the, uh, the title to the show, and it just hit the right spot at the right time and ended up on top of the pops at the age of seven in a little cassock and a roof in the, the midst of all these punk rockers and everything. It was just bizarre, but absolutely fabulous. You recently uh, formed at Buckingham Palace, and it's not the first time that you've performed for the Royal Family. Tell us about that. Uh, well, it was very exciting. It was for the Queen's wedding anniversary. Oh. And um, I was asked to go along, and having been very fortunate to appear for the Royal Family for quite a few times now, 
Uh, it was very exciting because I'd never actually been to Buckingham Palace. I'd been to all their other palaces and estates and everything like that, but never Buckingham Palace. And I arrived and they asked me um, if I would like to meet the Queen and Prince Philip before the concert because they, they wouldn't have time to see me afterwards. And, um, did you do it? And so I did. So I, I <laughs> went in, I was so excited. And um, I was wearing a, a tie that my musical director had given me. Very sadly, he passed away. Uh, but I wanted to wear something of him because he was such a royalist. And, um, but it was a very loud tie, a uh, Harlequin style tie. And Prince Philip walked in and um, before he'd even got anywhere near me, he said, my goodness boy, that's, that's, a, that's a tie and a half. He said, there must be a story behind that. So of course I told him the story about, about Roy. And, um, and then the door opened and the corgis came in. And that's usually a sign that the Queen comes out standing with my best behaviour. And, um, and she didn't appear, just the dogs. And the dogs then took quite a liking to one of my legs. <laughs> and, and I was getting quite paranoid that I was at Buckingham Palace um, <laughs> hitting it off with one of the corgis. Um, and the Prince of said, oh, so they, they seem to like you. And that's why I said, I have, I have two dogs of my own. And um, anyway, this dog was very, very friendly. So I knelt down and I was rubbing its tummy and it was on its back and it was its way to the air. And, um, and he said, oh, you made a hit there. And I said, yes, I seem to. And then I looked up and there was a pair of black court shoes in my eye line and the Queen had walked in and I hadn't known, and here's me rubbing this dog's stomach, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? So I was trying to get up being very dignified, and I couldn't remember whether I had to curtsy or bow at the same time, so <laughs> I was making quite sure of myself. And she said, um, Susie seems to like you. And I said, who's Susie? And she said, the dog. And I said, oh yes, I said, we well, seem to um, hit it off very well, actually. But she was lovely, absolutely lovely, she was a great lady. Actually, the Queen said, um, she said, what are you doing at the moment? And I just been in America um, doing the Phantom mm. and, um, and she said oh I haven't seen that you know and I said oh I said right I said, um, I said it's very good show I said I can get you tickets if you want and she said oh that's been very interesting and she said um, and which part do you play and I said I play the Phantom and she said do you mean that one <laughs> and I said yes that's the one <laughs> so all my nerves have got by that you, you appeared on Broadway was that the role that you, you were talking about yes yes um, I've appeared quite a few times um, in America now which I, I adore um, the American audience is just phenomenal and, and now talking of royalty of course uh, we have to mention your passion for Dame Julie Andrews <gasps> The legend that is, yes, she is an amazing lady. Uh, what, you met Julie Andrews, what happened? I did, and we were in a show, and, um, and we were all in the, um, the auditorium, um, just watching the rest of the show rehearse, and a lot of the sponsors were in the room as well, and um, so you were, you were sort of mixed with everybody, and I was sitting on the front row just watching, uh, sitting next to these two gentlemen, um, and Julie Andrews walked on, and I just lost all control <laughs> and went absolutely berserk, as did everybody else in the theatre. The unfortunate thing was, I then found out, um, to my shame, that the gentleman that I was sitting next to was blind. And he didn't know what I, I was jumping and screaming about. But also, he had his dog under the chair. And the dog came up and the, st the dog started barking because he, he thought I was attacking the man. Um, and all this while Julie Andrews is trying to perform and she just sees this deranged man trying to scream and clap up at her while this dog was going to... Dogs, dogs sort of appear quite regularly in my life for different reasons. Um, but she was so nice and we went to meet her afterwards and everybody was lined up to meet her and she, she, just, and she did it to everybody. She said, how do you do? I'm Julie Andrews. And, um, and she got to me and she said, how do you do, I'm Julie Andrews? And I went, oh. and she said, thank you. And then moved to the next person. So I thought, I've missed all my life and I've just ruined it. So I ran to the end of the queue. And when she got to the end and she went, haven't I just seen you? And I said, you have, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I've waited all my life. I said, I've just ruined it. But I have to tell you everything. I'm just madly in love with you. So I think she thought I was quite strange. Now, you won Entertainer of the Year. How exciting is that? It was very, very exciting. Then. And it wasn't just once, you won it three times. I did indeed. A hat yes, yes. A hat trick. I was very proud. Um, and you can't win it anymore after that. Um, really? So you've got it. Oh. Yeah, I wanted one. <laughs> I don't like odd numbers, I just wanted another one. That's it for this week. Back to you in the studios, aren't we? 
That was London Calling with Jeff Christian and the fabulous Andrew Robley. London Calling is produced in association with Mr. Binks Media. And now it's time for Watch This Space. Now our Hollywood reporter Betty Chipmunk loves gossip and loves things all celeb. So let's check out her weekly breakdown of what's hot and what's not in Tinseltown. I give you the one, the only, the fabulous Miss Betty Chipmunk. Hello, you lucky people. Betty Chipmunk here with more from the crazy world of Hollywood celebs. Lady Gaga can legally drive a car now. The 30-year-old singer took to Instagram recently to share that she officially has a driver's license. Selma and police! And yes, I have finally got my license after years of driving with an adult present and a learner's permit, she wrote. I am free! Rolling with the homies! Maybe she meant homos! Here's hoping the Oscar-nominated singer-actress wears her seatbelt. I mean, can you imagine what it would look like if she got pulled over by the cops? Name, license, and registration, please. Hi, I'm Lady Gaga. Sit back down where you belong. In the front of your squad car with your flashes on. Good luck, Stephanie. We love you. So nude selfies are all the rage in Hollywood. And I know, before you ask, I won't be sharing mine. And I'm sure neither will Zender. Hollywood's biggest stars are stripping down to their birthday suits. For social media, Kate Hudson was the latest celeb to hop on the bandwagon when she posted a naked throwback to Instagram. Now Hudson isn't the only star bearing all. Kim Kardashian, Emily Ratajkowski, Ariel Winter, Gigi Hadid, and Chelsea Handler have all been showing some serious skin of late on Instagram. Now put it away, ladies. We don't need to see everything. Oh. So where do you stand? on the subject of getting in. Cause you know, I have a little tattoo on, okay Xander, I'm getting on with it. Oh, he's such a bossy person in my ear. As you may know by now, Dame Judi Dench is a huge fan of body art. She's worn her 007 James Bond themed crystals three times now, and most recently in June. But at the age of 81, she decided to finally make a permanent addition. On her birthday, back in December, she got her first ever ink job. Her new tattoo was a gift from her daughter, Tara, a.k.a. Cinti Williams, and is situated over her right wrist and bears the phrase, Carpe Diem, in bold font, which apparently is her motto to live by, which means, see the day. I mean, seize the day. We say, good luck, Dame Judy. So clearly it takes very little for Roseanne Barr to rage against presumed Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton, the fact of which apparently not mean she endorses Donald Trump for president. No way, no how. I did not endorse Donald Trump. An article recently published in The Hollywood Reporter featuring an interview with her about many things, one of them being the presidential election. It teases that she comes out for Trump under a headline of Roseanne Barr on Trump, playing the heel for Hillary, pot and being a farmer. In the piece, Barr was quoted as saying, I wouldn't be Hillary, but this does not constitute an endorsement. Okay, Miss Barr. So the Rose creator and star gave the interview for the same reason she agreed to do a telephone chat recently. Roseanne for President, her documentary, which arrives in theaters any day now. The film following her 2012 run for president on the ticket of a third party. Make sure you go see it. In 2014, Justin Bieber was ordered to do two years of probation for throwing eggs at his neighbor's house. He was also ordered to pay $80,000 in damages and he must have been throwing dinosaur eggs, is all I can say. An L.A. judge, uh, no it wasn't Judy Shanklin, unfortunately, just imagine, ruled to terminate Bieber's probation 30 years earlier, sorry 30 days earlier, that's just wishful thinking on my part. Following news of his probation termination, the sorry singer shared a video of his impressive wakeboarding skills, adding yet another talent to his long list of things he's really, 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 really good at. So there you go, kids. 
I am sure that has taught you much about the justice system in the USA and how being a rich celeb really can get you off. And finally, uh, oh excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, so embarrassing burping on live TV. But let's face it, I'm not the only celeb burping in public, there's also a gal. The 28 year old Brit who performed at the Glastonbury Festival in Pelton, Somerset, England, while the entire set was memorable, there were two specific moments that deserve an extra round of applause. First, while performing River Lee, a single off her album, the 25 year old Fever suddenly stopped singing. I'm gonna ask to stop that one again. Sorry, I'm a bit out of breath, she said to the crowd, but because it's Adele, the audience didn't seem to mind. In fact, many applauded the mom of one for restarting her song. Seems I'm in good company, don't you think? That's all from me for today, so Xander, it's back to you in the studio. Thanks to Betty Chipmunk for her personal perspective on Hollywood today. Burping on my show, Betty, whatever next. Adele can get away with it, darling, but you can not. Oh no, you can't. And neither can you, Quad, so don't try it. Quad's still over there. In love with the uh, bluebirds uh, singing around his head. Let's hope it lasts. That's it for today's episode of Xandermonium. Don't forget to join my mailing list at xandergibbs.com and to follow us on social media. Thanks to Jeff Christian, Andrew Robley, musical theater performer and recording artist. And thanks to Betty Chipmunk and the fabulous Claude who is in love and everyone that worked on today's show. But most of all, thanks to you, the audience out there for watching. We'll see you next time on Xandermonium. And I really do love you all. Bye-bye. Exodus. Movement of ja people. Exodus. Movement of ja people. Hello, it's me, Winston. Just wanted to say, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm about to go and sunbathe and drink a little rum. Because that's all there is to do around here. Let's face it. See you next time on the show. Love it has been good to me this time around. Things were they were bound to change when it was found. Sugar now that tasted sweeter on my lips. My heart is now intact and I can find no ribs.